when I said yes to Created, four years ago, I had no idea what I was saying yes to. Um, I just remember the founder asking if I would join and hearing the Lord say, say yes, just say yes. Nobody else is willing to say yes. And so I did. And I think naively joined in and jumped in and started to read some books about addiction and sex industry and got some stats, but had no idea of how much it would chip at me. Every story of a young woman being abused by their father at the age of three, every story of pastors and church people, my people, taking advantage of a woman, every story of women running for their lives down Nebraska because men were trying to kill them or rape them or um, do something else to them that would harm their life. Every story, every story chips and chips and chips and chips at you. And then when something like cancer happens to you, it snatches the little bit that's left and you feel like you have nothing left. And I remember feeling very tired. Um, and I think there's still a little bit of me that still feels that way. So I guess my story starts last year, ending of last year, when the doctors were concerned about a mass that they saw in my left kidney. I got that call on a Wednesday had a second opinion on a Thursday, and I was in surgery the following Tuesday. Um, everything happened so quickly, trying to figure out what's gonna happen to Created while I'm gone, who's gonna take care of my kids. My mom was flying in from Africa to make sure that they were taken care of. Ryan was trying to figure out work, how much time can he take. Everything was happening so quickly. And we got out of surgery, it was cancer, but I still wasn't feeling better. Um, come to find out I was still bleeding internally. So I had to go in for a second surgery two days later. And it feels indicative of my life. <laughs> I think there's always bleeding happening. I think there's something about learning the art to mourn and grieve the women have created, their stories, their brokenness, joining their struggle, um, seeing them run away, knowing that they're so close, um, but feeling like they're not close enough. And, and, and remaining and staying and, and seeing the bleeding happening again. And if I wanna ease back out and take an easy road, then I'd have to leave created. Um, and I have to get another kidney transplant and be normal, whatever that looks like. And I think normal for me is having one kidney and um, living on the streets and being in the clubs and, having a community of volunteers and a community of women that are trying to follow Jesus. I wanted to quit. <laughs> There's still some, I mean, I wanted to quit last week. Those moments come where it just feels like this is too much. Jesus, where are you? You need to come right now. This woman's about to leave this house right now. There's moments I go into the created house bathroom and I'm praying and I'm weeping and I'm just like, you can come right now. If you come right now, she won't leave. And where are you And this? Are we really doing anything? And, and should I be home more with my boys? And should I do this or that? And um, I don't know what the answer is for you. I think the answer for me has been to continue, that he will be with me. And the image I got right before I had my first surgery was of him carrying me through the valley of the shadow of death. And I remember clinging on to that and thinking it was just for cancer. And the new year came, 2014, it was gonna be good. I'll be out on the other side. And I still feel like I am walking, crawling through the valley of the shadow of death. But I realize with shadows, there has to be light. And it's because Jesus is close to us. And there's a lot of tears in the valley of the shadow of death. And there's a lot of sleepless nights, um, a lot of fighting, a lot of thinking back on your conversations. Did you do that right? Um, a lot of like, why now? Um, but Jesus is so close. Jesus has been so close to me. And so I don't have a, this is what it looks like 101 manual. I'm still waiting for Jeremy to write that resource, but I don't know that. I think it's each of our journeys and calls, and I think God is just looking for us to be willing to go for it 
and not to give up. It seems so easy. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. I think this is hard because I don't feel like I'm out. And I think the scary part is I feel like I'll never be out. That this is a call for us to endure a life filled with hurt and darkness. And um, I think we're called to fight. So if you want to join me, I'm fighting.